it starts automatically. Yep. Hello and welcome to our EcoBear webinar today. First of all, before we start with the webinar, our main question, can you hear us? Can you type in the chat that we know uh, you are alive and we can hear you and you can hear us? Okay, perfect. You can hear us. Very good. So first of all, my name is Stefan Becker and I'm here together with Birgit Becker, Ralph Becker and Ingo Schneider as a customer. And he will tell us a story how to use uh, the new features. And first of all, I would like to introduce all people and that they start a bit what they know and what we are talking about today. And first of all, I give over the microphone to Birgit. Hello, Birgit. Hello, Stefan. Hello, all others. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy that we now have the webinar about our new features for smart working or home office support with video conference and guacamole. Uh, also in English, first time. We already talked a bit more in German webinars about it. And yeah, you may know me already. I have been talking or participating in a few seminars and I'm responsible in eGroupware for support and consulting. And yeah, I'll, let's say, give up to Ralph and Hardy. Yeah, let's say pass over. <laughs> yeah. yeah. My name is Ralph Becker. I'm with Birgit, one of the two managers of eGrouper, and I'm since a long time, yeah, you know, one of the main developers of eGrouper, and also responsible for our hosting solution. With me here, I have Hadi, one of Hi. our main programmers. I'm Hadi Nathan. I'm the eGrouper developer, <laughs> working for eGrouper about. Six years already. Yep. Yep. So, and I developed this GTC video conference feature. It's the new feature that we have for the Thanks. Thanks, Adi. So, Ingo. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Ingo Schneiders, and I'm um, a customer from eGroupware for several years and um, I'm happy with this new features coming up right now and uh, we are using some of them and maybe I will showcase some of them. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Um, let's talk later about the showcase. First of all, Bigit, let's, let's start a bit what the plan and what we've improved in our home uh, office features and what's new with status app with new features what's up in ecoware what's about guacamole and all this stuff can you talk about more general about it and i think ralph will go more deeply inside the technical issues and what we've done with jitsi yeah yeah so since the last maintenance release from ecoware and also a few days earlier, already in our hosting available, we have the new Jitsi video conference integration and Hardy was working on further integrations and optimizing that live um, in different aspects. So we, we look into what can we do with the status app how does it work to start a call or plan a call from a dress book? And how to schedule an event with a video conference using the calendar? And how does it work with participating or with external participants? All these things we will show live. And then in the second part, we have a look on the um, integrations we Integr or we, we started with open ID integrations, and one of that is the bigger part is the guacamole, where also Ingo will show what his company is doing now. Ralph will tell a bit more about the technical issues and also about another use case from a customer. Um, and we are happy to answer all questions you may have or problems you run into best practice you want to know so 
Um, we can also, if that's important for anybody to talk a bit more in detail or ask questions, we could also enable every anybody who wants to talk and has a camera and a microphone, we could also allow him to talk. Just let us know if there is something what you want to ask, not only in the chat, but really live. Okay, so I would say um, I go live with the screen sharing. Oh, yo. Um, you see that there is a notification coming from our webinar, which is in our calendar, um, showing the details from the webinar, what I put here into. So that's coming automatically with the alarm. You also see, so that's now our production system. And we will. Parts I'm showing we will do on our production system because we have there more people live. And I will also sh show other cases like the address book from a test instance just because of the data protection um, rules to not show customer data in there. Okay, so let's start with the features we have in there since <coughs> the last maintenance release. So one thing is to see or to better see it, um, use the status up. And on the status up, you can click at any time with the right click, and it shows the actions we have. Some are new actions since the last webinar and will come with the next maintenance release to our installation customers. Some have already been there. So I can, for example, click on video. Miss Hardy. <clears throat> okay, the mm -hmm. internet connection. Now you probably hear Hardy from, um, or you, you probably can't hear Hardy through the, <clears throat> I begin. Through the the general thing, but you see how how the chitsy and the <clears throat> call works. I think it's easier if we um, use later on Hardy directly with Ralph's camera to to tell a bit more about the chitsy itself, because with my microphone on, um, people can't hear what Hardy will will tell. Okay, so I just end the call again. So if I now call Birgit, you will also see how it works if the telephone rings for her. To see the other side, you will see there, Stefan Becker is calling down there. So you see also how it looks for other people who are locked in in Ecoware. Yeah, um, the interesting thing, you may not hear it because it's again on my loudspeaker. We also have the new feature that this is um, coming with a live tone. So it's really ringing here. And if I'm not taking the call, it will show that Stefan tried to call me. You see that nice small symbol here. Um, and also in my notifications, it will show after it's pulled, um, that Stefan, that I missed the call from Stefan and I could call him back. If I click on call back, he's initiating the call to him. Okay, I'll, I'll close the window directly again because it's nothing what we need to show here further. But that's the interesting things with um, the Chitsi now um, that we have a much better integration. And also for everybody who now use why there's no voice. Um, voice means ringing bell. Yeah, it is there. 
but because of my loudspeaker and microphone, you haven't been able to see it. But you see now I get a, a message that Stefan did not pick up my call and I could also retry it again. So there is normally a voice, but over this, this system and the webinar system, you don't hear the voice, just for clarification. There is a voice, a calling sound. Yeah. Yeah. Um, additionally, a new feature, what we integrated and implemented with the status app is that you could, especially if your internet connection is not the good, you could just start an audio call, which goes over the Jitsi server and just switch your camera off by default. That's nice. And um, we have sometimes with Hardy in a home office a problem with his internet connection. And therefore, it's great that you could also start with camera off. And new feature is we also integrated a direct phone call to somebody, which if you use IP telephony, um, it just will ring. I could, let's say, whom I tried, let's say, I tried to call Hardy with a phone call on his mobile phone, and you now hear it ringing because that's my. It is, it is silent. That's my <laughs> snow phone <laughs> ringing now. <laughs> but but I can I can show it probably to camera. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, so these are things which are coming with IP telephony um, integrated in Equal. I could show more details about what you can do there in general, but I would say um, let's go a bit further with um, the Jitsi itself. And I switch to a different instance. So that's my test instance, our tutorial eGroup Bernet instance which has, let's say, like the demo, um, some fake contacts and addresses in. So how to start anything from the address book to, for example, to start a call uh, or plan a meeting with someone, you can simply pick the people you like to have in your video conference. On its on the right click, you see the video conference. If the people you selected are online, you could start a direct video call, which would do the same like from what we did from the status app. It's just from address book you can use more people in one conference while the status app always goes for a video call one-to-one. -one. If I go now for schedule my conference, it will open calendar. And in the calendar, it opens the dialogue for the um, calendar. Depending on your settings, if you go for the, for the full dialogue or for the small dialogue, it will open directly in the edit window or it will open with a small dialogue. Anyway, as soon as it is there, my internet connection seems to be also not so good at the moment. <sighs> That's why it takes uh, some time until it gets displayed. You now see if I schedule a video conference, it directly has a checkbox for the video conference enabled. For the participants, I automatically get the people in I selected for my call. And what we also do is we enabling an alarm for everybody automatically. And for sure, that's also something I want to show. So if I now want to 
invite someone external. Let's say I invite myself with my email address. It now goes either it, if it's in the address book, it goes from the address book. If not, you could also just type in an email address. And here are the settings to notify externals, which are switched automatically to yes for any video conference. And therefore, I just have to save or apply, pick the, the time when I want to use it. And as soon as I save it, it sends the invitation out to the other users. And the interesting thing is that this how did I name it and when was my meeting? Interesting question. I think it was. <laughs> Probably I should put myself into the calendar. Um, yeah, so the link with the invitation will include anybody who is in the, in the meeting, a different link, which includes his image or his avatar and his name. And therefore the link is different for each participant. That's so strange. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll simply do another meeting. Probably. It's a created from calendar. And I put in some participants like Nicole and Daniel. And I check the video conference and similar to the time before, okay, don't want something in the past. Let's say I schedule it for next week, the same time. This in with a video conference, check notify externals is on. Um, I add my alarm. I save it. And now going to next week. Yeah, unfortunately, that uh, conference system takes a toll on Birgit's laptop. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now here I have my event, and I can use the click right. So context menu to join for myself. Everybody else got the notification. As soon as the event is ready, the alarm is coming up. It will again, similar to what we showed for the direct call, pop up um, that you are now five minutes before the event starts. And it will take you the actions or show you the actions to participate in, similar to what we did from the, from the direct call. OK, so I would say. Um, Maybe I hand over to Ralph, and Ralph and Hardy could tell a bit more about the um, technical part behind it. Yeah, I can say a bit about the moderation. Um, Rocket Chat already allowed to do Jitsi calls. So that until the last uh, Rocket Chat release, it was always somewhere deep down buried in a menu to start the Jitsi call. And we were thinking, what can we do to improve the working from home situation we are all facing now? And so the idea came up, yeah, just make it a lot easier by clicking just on the status bar or on the address book to do such call. And also 
keep a bit away from the complex installation situation we face with rocket chat which we are going to improve uh, also in the next weeks um, by just giving everyone the opportunity with a sponsored Jitsi server from Ecover GmbH and also from our hosting or infrastructure partner Ionos. So with that solution, you can have a Jitsi server running within the European Union or even within Germany, which is managed by us. And um, at least if you have a contract with us, like in the hosting, it will also fulfill the GDPR requirements on that regard. Yeah, I think Hardy can tell a bit more of um, the struggles we had and what we, what measures we took to make that uh, easy usable for uh, everyone. Well, yeah, um, we we started with this um, status app um, integration. We thought that because it's um, mostly available for all users that we can initiate call and receive calls via the status app so we started from there um, adding the context menus and um, uh, having it available for for everyone who have the status app installed on the the grouper and um, the thing was we, we started from the scratch so um, we didn't have much um, uh, feature um, in the beginning but um, as you see that we're progressing more. We were, we're receiving the call and sending the call. We're sending the audio call and video call separately, and um, and we're receiving the missed calls. And all those things are the features that we implemented in the last, um, I would say, two weeks. And um, in the technical part of the Jitsi, so um, as Ralph mentioned already, so we are integrating Jitsi. Um, um let's say um communication into e grouper and um for for that matter so you, as you see in the we did some a screenshot right now so the site configuration is the part that you need to configure for um integrating gitc server into e grouper um if you go to the status app um site configuration then you get the video conference tab, which um, the first one is the GTC, and um, you need to enable, of course, the video conference you would like to, and then you put your uh, backend part, which GTC server is the only one at the moment, but we are planning maybe in the future we add more backends, like if you have other, let's say, video conference servers that you want to use via the e but at the moment it's just GTC. And then we have the domain of the um, GTC server that you want to talk to, where you have your GTC server installed. And then we have two other fields, which is the application ID and the application secret. So yeah, um, we are, um, sorry, we are, we are um, talking to GTC server via the um, uh, JWT token. And for creating that token, we need these two Field. We need the ID and the secret of the um, the GC server JWT token. And yeah, those just, things are gone, gone. Really. I just wanted to say um, in our hosting, we use our GC Grouper org server, which um, is not a public one. While for everybody outside, we have been configuring automatically that sponsored GC server Ralph was talking about at chitsigroupware.net. That's uh, and it's, uh, all what I wanted to, <laughs> to right. put into. Right, right, right. right. And um, yeah, for, for um, someone who has its own GTC server, let's say somewhere outside, an external one, then they need to configure all these fields. Otherwise, that they use the default one, So, which is um, the ecroupware.net. Um, and um, so you need the application ID from the GTC JWT token, which is in the GTC server configuration. If someone has the GTC server installed somewhere outside, then they need to configure that, or they need to know that field, the application ID and the secret of the JWT token. And then once they put it there and then save the configuration, then the GTC 
video conference call should be available on the status app plus the other um, applications which they are using like address book or calendar they're using the same backend functionality okay i would say um Stefan. <laughs> Yeah, I forgot to turn on my microphone, so it's not so easy to talk. Uh, <laughs> what I wanted to say is there was a question about what the other people need to receive a call, and this is just a browser. You should just need the browser, and then you can and, um, receive all these video calls. But it should be a newer browser, not an old browser. That's all. Yeah, we, we experience sometimes people having problems um, that either the camera is not working or the microphone is not working. Um, yeah, um, I can't say more, much more as just try it out and maybe have a look at it about your firewall also if something is blocking the connections, this could be the case. One thing if I may to add is um, because the Jitsi um, uses the WebRTC technology in the browser part and you need to make sure that your camera and microphone has access to the page of the Jitsi or the Jitsi server web page. And if that is blocked by default or you accidentally blocked it, then it's always blocked unless that you just say no. It should not be blocked and I want to have it allowed always. So that's something you need to check um, on your browser configuration, um, whether you're using Firefox or Chrome, they both have the, the same configuration. And you need to allow um, video access and, um, and the microphone access to the Jitsi server. Yeah, if you click on that little camera icon in right, the URL maybe. bar, you should be able to see that. Yeah, but... Right. Uh... Oh, no, it, it only shows that it is there, yeah. No. Okay, I think our time is running a bit fast, so I would say let's go to the other points because we have a lot to do and a lot to show. Yes, yeah, so I would say let's start with Guacamole. Um, the Guacamole idea was basically born out of our community manager was telling me that he has a lot of people who can't come into the office and unfortunately in their companies, they don't have laptops. They simply take at home and start with working with a laptop. And so we were thinking, what can we do to enable that people to work? And then he remembered a project called Guacamole, uh, which beside being a nice dish uh, is a, protocol converter which converts the Windows RDP re remote desktop protocol to HTML5. And that allows us to embed a Windows desktop, a remote Windows desktop um, into, yeah, into Ecoware or open it ourselves. And I can show or uh, make a little demo about that. Um, I need to share my screen again. So let's go here. So this is a test server we have. And on that test server, I already uh, created a connection to a Windows server and in that Windows server to show a bit the performance because that is probably, or that was my fear, how quickly can that possibly be to show a Windows desktop via a website? And I think the best thing to show that is we can watch a YouTube video here, which is running inside that website by being displayed from a, from a Windows computer in a remote location. So for me, I'm at the office in Kaiserslautern at the moment. That PC is running in the data center in Frankfurt. And God knows where YouTube <laughs> servers are at the moment. Yeah, so that is Guacamole. I can show a little bit about the general integration in terms of I'm 
just stepping out of guacamole. Um, Ralph, maybe yep. it makes sense that you make it full page and not, or at least a bit bigger. Yeah. So that's also a really interesting detail. The Windows desktops and the cats <laughs> keep playing. And I can just show in Guacamole. These are Windows connections I created. And yeah, they open in a new tab. And we have some basic settings we can do here, including I can specify basically which user should have access to that connection. I think um, also Ingo can tell a bit more about what the ideas behind that is. Um, let me go back to Guacamole. And in Guacamole, we have the full Guacamole settings. Uh, let me just switch to English so we can see that in English. Uh, in Guacamole, you see the same connections I have there. And they have, uh, let's say, a rich set of things you can enable. We just added a couple of default fonts into Ecober to not overwhelm everyone with what is uh, possibly available about screen size and all sorts of RDP features, redirecting of drives, and yeah, a lot of things available there. I would say, uh, unless there are really technical questions, I, I, I can give one more technical detail that is, how does the installation work? Let's just switch that off again. Um, because that's probably interesting. Um, how do I get that into my ego bear? Um, we have currently an installation package available, and that installation package installs a set of containers like our Rocket Chat or Collabora installation does. And by installing that to your eCooper server, you have now the ability to make computers which your eCooper server can connect to. So I assume your eCooper server runs in your office for an on-site installation. And that server can connect to all your office PCs, given uh, firewall settings and so on. Um, then you can create connections there and can make them available. And why does that need eCooper, you could ask? Um, I could also just uh, port forward uh, the, from my firewall to the RDP server. And just let's say this is a very bad idea because RDP was never meant to be available on public internet. And what we do with eCooper is we can, we use strong authentication available nowadays in eCooper with a second factor, with web awesome keys and pass that on via OpenID Connect as authentication to uh, the Guacamole server. And the Guacamole server also uses all users and groups available from eCooper. So you can use eCooper to basically manage the PCs you have in the office and make them available. I think that's the time where I should hand over to Ingo to tell a bit about uh, how they, as one of the first customers to use that, are using that feature uh, or planning to use that feature. Ingo. <clears throat> Ralph, you need to finish your desktop sharing that Ingo can start it. OK. Um, as Ralph uh, mentioned, um, we are also in the same situation, we are running out of notebooks and um, try to find other ways to um, uh, get people to work from their home site. And what we 
want to avoid is um, connecting private PCs to our office network. Also, via the standard uh, VPN uh, we uh, use for notebooks and things like that. And um, yeah, and also in the office um, or at home, it is not um, very easy for the people to get to work. So um, the easiest way is to give them their desktop um, they have here in the office. And that's the way um, Guacamole integrates um, here at uh, Mülheim in Germany. I will try to uh, take a quick show of um, how we did it. And we did just um, several um, PCs here right now. I'm not sure, Ingo, okay, I, at I least I can't see that your screen is already enabled. I can only see a black screen. Can, did you click? You um, what? Okay. Screen sharing is the second icon from the top from that icon bar, and then you, you have to it. enable it again then. It asks you in the browser and then you have to uh, click enable. Can you just see my desktop? No, we can't see it. I'm not sure if it's just my connection, but at least for me, also the the microphone from Ingo is very bad to understand. Is that the same for you, yep. guys? Yeah, we can also we also can't hear him. Maybe you can turn off your camera for a moment, that you have a more bandwidth um, to go for. The desktop sharing. No, he's just completely away, so maybe he has some internet problems right now. Yeah, okay. okay um, I can show a bit more things about uh, the Guacamole, or again, let, let's say talk a bit more about Guacamole till Stefan uh, or Ingo comes back. I think one of the biggest aspects is also compared to a laptop is access. Because Guacamole itself doesn't leave any traces on the laptop using it. So if I, let's say, take a private computer, create a VPN connection inside the office, and download files and work on these files, I leave a lot of traces and temporary files from all the office programs I use on my laptop. And that can be also a big GDPR issue. Okay, um, I think looking at the time and that Ingo is not coming back, should we continue with the other open ID points, <clears throat> given we don't have more questions to Guacamole? I mean, that is probably, if you have any questions to Guacamole, please feel free to write them in the chat so I'm able to answer them for you. Yeah, I just wanted to show a bit more about the um, open ID in in general um, while we're waiting for others to come. So this is now, for example, we are open ID. We integrated our WordPress website, and so there is on the WordPress website we have an open ID um, client running and it authenticates against the eGroupware users um, 
for the WordPress side. And we have here in the eGroup where we allowed who sh is able to use it and what's the start address and in general about what are the allowed um, grants and scopes. Unfortunately, I have it on um, in German language only said it now um, but I think you 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 get it it's it's easy to understand and I uh, now going to the website itself you see I'm ah, now he having comes back. Ah, he's back okay yeah you see this is the edit dialogues from my WordPress site and this is the guacamole site we have on our website and I could even edit it in eco fair depending on the permission. So if I can't only read permission, I could also use it as an intranet um, for the users to show it in eco fair at least with any application. But I would say um, hopefully if it works now for Ingo better, we could try to switch back and I close my screen sharing and give to Ingo to try to show you again um, what he did in his company. Hey. Ingo, can you I try? will give another yep. try. Did you close your screen? Yes. Oh, okay. There's a big button freigeben. Did you see it? Yeah, but but I don't have to. Doesn't work. It doesn't. Oh, once again. Okay. Okay. It looks like he's gone again. Yeah. Sorry. That's a problem with a live webinar. <laughs> Uh, with lots and lots of people and probably also the current situation uh, creating yeah demands for internet connections which might and bandwidth which might not be there okay yeah, I I think, think until okay. he comes back uh, we should ask some other questions or if there are any questions of people and people write questions and if you have any questions just write it inside now I mean, yep. can I also tell a bit about that other use case, which is a big construction bureau, which does calculation for bridges and um, things like that. And they have basically two problems, so to speak, which they are going to solve now with Guacamole and the integration of it in Ecover. One is um, they also fear that they might not always be able to work from the office and therefore they need to work from home. But these construction calculations require a lot of calculation power, a lot of power from the PCs. So it's not easy to do on a laptop and they have usually powerful workstations in the office to do the calculations. And the other thing is it's a multi-user system, so it needs a shared storage to be able to work on the construction drawings as well as on the calculations. And obviously, if even if you have a powerful enough computer to work uh, from home, um, you still have the problem if you create a copy of the whole project, work on it from home, and copy it back, you would lose all work of the other employees also working on that thing. So you have a very um, complicated reintegration of your work with the work of the other people. And Guacamole, by enabling to use the powerful workstations in the office, um, basically overcomes the problem that each home worker also needs a very powerful laptop or even a powerful desktop to work. And you overcome the problem that uh, to work together on um, that 
specialized CAD systems they have and the calculation system, you also need a performant connection to the file server and the database server, the central file and database server, which is also not easy to achieve from home, even all the GDPR issues in copying the stuff around. And therefore, for them, Guacamole is a really good fit. And they seemed from their tests, we couldn't get him into the webinar. They seem to be very happy with the performance. Okay, question. It's only RDP vSync, does it? Yeah, as I can tell a bit about the, pro the protocols. Um, it's RDP or VNC, so you should also be able to integrate a Mac. It also supports SSH, Telnet, and it supports access to Kubernetes pods, if that uh, is anything you need. So let's say SSH connections are already not so hard uh, to forward. So I think the, the graphical protocols like RDP and VNC, also access to, to desktops, are probably the more prominent features than um, access to any text-based uh, consoles. Any more feature, uh, any more questions? Otherwise, I will probably show a bit more about what we call the OpenID integration by sharing my screen again. <laughs> now I have the same. I have the same problem as Ingo. I press on sharing, and <laughs> nothing happens. Okay, that's interesting. Um, maybe it's also an issue with. Um, I got two days ago an email from our webinar platform that they have some problems, and it could maybe also affect webinars in the next days. And yeah, okay. Now it looks like. Ralph has a chance to share it. Um, I think now every click I made. Nicht erlaubt. Now it, uh, it opened it more than once because I was clicking on it. Let's try to be a little more patient with the system. Ah, okay. Uh, hello, Ingo. You're back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so finally why, back. Okay, but, I, um... okay. Yeah, I would say um, Ralph, tell a bit more about that uh, Portainer thing, and we will do something with Ingo later um, afterwards and try to put something on our website and uh, or maybe make a small YouTube video out of the, the, the case he has um, because it looks like it's simply not fully working at the moment with our webinar platform and the connections we have. Yeah, okay. OpenID Connect is a superset of OAuth, which is what you nowadays do to authenticate with a different provider. Um, that's something we used already to integrate with Rocket Chat. But I would say we talk it, took it a step further. We said, if these are all web applications, why not fully integrate them into Ecobra? So we are not only acting as an open ID connect or OAuth server, we also allow them to appear in Ecobra and to make the authentication depending on the authorization we do in Ecobra. So um, as we saw before, I can just say these users, these groups have access to that application. Um, I think you remember from Birgit showing that WordPress site where there was the admins group and two other users having access. 
Cortana is just an example for other applications I can um, integrate. Cortana is allow has also an OAuth login, which I'm just clicking here at the moment. The OAuth login does the typical OAuth redirection and exchanging of tokens, as you can see here. And now I'm in Portana. Portana is a tool to basically manage a Docker server. So what we can see here now are the containers running on my development system, including the containers um, which are eCooper itself. So I'm now basically looking at the guts of um, my eCooper development system. So that's nice to also administrate the containers and it allows to integrate, let's say, arbitrary web applications into eCooper. So the benefit for the user is um, if you have other web applications, you don't have to tell them for these web applications, you use that URL and you use this account. And for the other web application, you use another thing. And by the way, for the, that third application, your login is not this name, but another. And so we can create one system for the user where it doesn't need much education to know uh, if I need to go to the website, I just click here on the website and I don't need to know where actually under which URL it is running. And I can also manage in a central place in eCoop where which users need access to which web application. I think that's the main benefit point and it also allows us to phase out things like our wiki and replace it with yeah, existing powerful applications um, doing the same thing. So let me give back. The control here. Yeah, are there any questions to the Open IT Connect? Or on integrating other applications into eGoober? Yeah, Stefan, I would say. So big is well. also disappeared now. So we are <laughs> yeah. the last, the last moderator. So, well, keep, don't go away. So <laughs> we will see what's going on. I think we should ask some questions and we should stop the webinar. So I would say let's let's check what people are writing. And because time is also shown very long yeah, the now. The question was how to tell Igor where to use my own Jitsi server. I think Hardy showed that already. If you go to the site configuration inside administration of the status app, that might be the part which is not as obvious because the integration happens through the status app. This is where you set the URL or the domain name of your Jitsi server. And if your Jitsi server is not a public one, if it needs authentication and you also use JWT authentication, then you can give um, an application ID and that kind of password secret thing which you share with your Jitsi server to integrate with it. Any more questions? I don't see any more questions right now. Um, yeah, we will make, or we already did make a lot of information available on our website. Also, the guacamole installation is, there is now a page um, telling more about the guacamole feature. And uh, we also have in our wiki already installation instructions for guacamole. And obviously, um, if you need support, you can go to org, our forum and ask questions. 
or if you want, um, let's say, personal and professional support, um, you can obviously contact us <laughs> to uh, get help about um, these new features and eBooker in general. So we welcome back, Birgit. Yeah. So there was one question, how to use the own Chitsi server, but I think Ralph answered this question. It's just to configure in the status app which Chitsi server you should use. Is there any options that I can restart OpenID server? I'm not sure what restarting means because, um, yeah, it's not that it started or not started. It's it's an integral part of Ecoware. So if your Ecoware installation is working, the OpenID server um, should be working without problem. Maybe the question is, may I, is there a way to reset secrets I, sh I need to share with some other clients and I can't see anymore because they are not stored? Also if that was the question, obviously you can edit the client, the clients, um, fix URLs there. You can set a new password if you are not happen to still know the password and then enter the new password into uh, the client you want to integrate. Also in administration, OpenID Connect Server, you can enable a request protocol which helps you diagnose problems with it. Um, if you have more questions about it, yeah, probably the help ecoware.org or forum is a good way um, to answer that question and also share parts of the log so we can look into it and help you. Obviously, uh, you're always welcome to buy the port web chat and we look together on your machine and help you. Okay, I would say we've done a lot of stuff now. We explained a lot about the new features and it's now one hour. So I would uh, suggest if there's no further questions to uh, to stop this call. We also make this available on our YouTube channel very fast that you can also read this again or watch again if you have some questions or I want to show to other people how Guacamole and the video call works. Yeah, I think we will check what the how the, um, the video is from that webinar and maybe make parts better available via YouTube with a later um, YouTube video, for example, about Guacamole. But yeah, we will, we will decide and think that um, as soon as we know more about how it worked and how good the quality is. Is there any other things coming up with Ecovet in the next weeks, the next months? Any plans on your side about new features or new things you want to announce? Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously the features we showed are not in the last maintenance release. Uh, let's say our second go on uh, the GT call initiation. Um, that will come with the next maintenance release let's say sometime next week. Yeah, and we are planning for uh, Group 20.1 release with not much more features, but some technical changes in the software and also with the push server for better or quicker notifications um, to have that with a with new major release in eGroupware coming whenever we are ready in the next weeks. And I don't know, maybe it will be six weeks, maybe it will be less or more. We'll see. Okay, then I would say thank you everybody for your time. Yep, I would also say bye. Thank you, say say goodbye. As the English Nidas is writing also, show details, I can say our users are really happy with the Guacamole solution. Okay, thank you very much and have a nice day and be healthful, be healthy and see you later in the next webinar. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.